Okay, last night there was a big threat of snow and it doesn't look like any stuck on the ground where we actually camped, which yay, but I have to show you these mountains right outside the door. Actually, I haven't even been outside yet, so I think it's really cold. Oop, yep, I was right. Look at the mountains. You probably can't even see them. They're so white. They were totally brown yesterday and now they are covered in snow. La, 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 la. Good morning. We are still getting our coffee going this morning, but it's uh, our fourth day in our camper van in New Zealand, and we just wanted to record a little video and talk about what it's been like so far boondocking over New Zealand, or as they call it, freedom camping. Because we haven't been to a holiday park, also known in America as an RV park, yet. I think we're gonna go to one tonight so yeah. we can plug in and charge everything. But so far it's been all boondocking all the time. And all of our friends, like our good friends Kevin and Mandy, who you probably don't know if you're watching this, but maybe you do, at 188 square feet Everyone on Instagram. Everyone knows Kevin and Kevin Mandy. and Mandy are awesome. Um, they would be very proud of us <laughs> uh, because we spend in America, like our rig hasn't been equipped for boondocking. We haven't made it a big priority. We haven't done solar and the battery setups and things like that and we're bigger. We have a tow car. So our travel in the U.S. has very much just been like, we're going to go to a campground, we're going to, you know, detach our tow car, we'll drive into the places that we're going to go experience because there's right. no sense in driving our 33-foot RV plus our tow car. So coming over to New Zealand, um, the whole idea was like, let's go to the most far-reaching places, like let's get a, the smallest camper van, or one of the smallest camper vans possible. We ended up getting a little bit bigger one. But so it's about 23 feet. Yeah, it's about 23 feet, but we can still park in a parking spot. And so compared to our rig in the US, it is way, way smaller. <laughs> One of the things that a lot of people told us before we came here, people that had been to New Zealand before was, oh, you can camp anywhere. I'm like, anywhere? And they're like, yeah, t totally. Like pretty much <laughs> anywhere you can pull over and camp for free, which I thought was pretty much too good to be true. But there's a bunch of apps that will actually tell you like park here for free, can't yep. park here for free, or you used to be able to park here for free and now you can't because people have abused it by dumping their black tank or, or doing whatever into the land. Mm -hmm. And so we've been using a couple different apps like Camper Mate and we've stayed actually at this campsite where we are right now for the past two nights for free. Yeah. And it's so cool. Like I feel like there's a lot of resources in America and they're getting better for finding mm -hmm. camping spots like this that are like totally remote, and, yeah. totally free. Yeah, Campendium's probably the bit, the best one. That we've used, yeah. Um, but I I don't know, it feels way more wild here. But it's like, oh, there's an app that will tell me the exact coordinates and how to get there. That's amazing. Yeah, we're also in a very foreign country, so everything feels a little bit more exotic and wild. Yes. We've also used an app called Rankers. So throughout the trip, we'll kind of test these apps and learn a lot more about freedom camping. But so far, uh, we just want to share a little bit of what we've learned because we've used a couple of these apps. They've been helpful so far, and we still have... Uh, like a few 43 more days in the RV. So we'll have a good bit more time to try and find a bunch of really cool campsites. We'll list those all on our website. Um, all the pretty spots that we found, just like all the people who have done before us. <laughs> um, the main thing that is obvious that, you know, is true for America as it is here is just to make sure and uh, we have to obviously clean up everything after mm -hmm. every time. Um, I feel like you can't make a video and talk about boondocking or anything like that without mentioning this because the thing is so many people have tried very, very hard in this country to like make things like this available mm -hmm. to people. To preserve it. To preserve it, so, you know, so, you know, basically don't be a jerk and come in and screw up by, you know, dumping your crap everywhere, <laughs> like both literally or your trash or whatever. Which um, they said when they hosted the, like the rugby world, world championships, I know nothing about rugby, a few years ago that that's what happened because they had so many tourists mm. here so they've really cracked down over the past few years so we're not we're not going to be those tourists yes we are not we will be responsible and we're self-contained yeah. so we have no excuse for messing up the stuff outside yeah. i think it'd be kind of cool to like walk through the rig real quick and point some of the stuff out that has enables us to boondock okay. yeah we'll take this with us let's start with uh, the one place of the future, this is where all of your read arts, readouts are for the rig. And I'm gonna show you, we're actually running on low battery right now because we have the lights on and everything, but this will tell me when I press the house battery symbol, we've got 11.5 charge, so pretty low, but we're about to leave. 
Then we've got my water read out. So we, oh, we've still got like 30% of our tank. We haven't filled up once. They gave us a rig with a full tank of water three days ago and it's, we, we've yeah. still got plenty of water. This is our water pump. And then our gray tank is only 30% full. And then our house battery is at our, no, our chassis battery is at 12.5. So we know the engine will start. So one, super classy. Two, the batteries have lasted us a super long time. We've run the lights, we've run the fan while we've um, been sleeping all night long and we haven't died yet. So that's super awesome. And then over here, we've got our Truma. Is it a combi? You're asking me questions, I'm not sure. This is, it's the hot water heater and the furnace are right here, which I think having talked to Truma that that's what they call their combi, but I can control all this. So we had the furnace on all last night and the fan on. Now in most American RVs, this will kill your RV. And we will get comments from people saying, I ran my furnace last night and we woke up dead. Like what's going on? The furnaces take up so much battery power over there. I don't know how y'all do it. <laughs> but this one has been amazing. And I think I just heard it kick on. Cause I actually just- <laughs> Actually no, if it, leave it on. It feels good on my feet. Oh, okay. But yeah, you can set the fan speed and everything. So it's been really cool. There's also an eco mode on it so that when you are boondocking, it will use less power and it will use less propane. So I feel like this rig, even though it's not equipped with solar, it's not equipped with a generator or anything like that, it is built to last in a place like this. So having a fridge that is three-way that can run on battery and propane specifically is perfect for freedom camping, for boondocking, because I know that no matter what, our stuff is staying cold. This is a self-contained uh, motorhome slash camper van, whatever you want to call it, which means there is a bathroom on board. There's a bunch of people in New Zealand that are just in like minivans, and those are, I think, true camper vans, and they aren't self-contained, so they don't have bathrooms on board, which means there are certain campsites where they're not allowed. Since we are self-contained, we can camp pretty much anywhere compared to people that are not self-contained. So we have our cassette toilet, we've got our shower and everything, and we don't have to worry about anything. All right, one quick thing too is that later this week we'll go through the RV and do a full tour of this thing because uh, we did that on Instagram. As soon as we picked up the RV, we just jumped on Instagram Live and did this big tour because we were like, we love this RV, it's awesome. Um, and so later this week, we'll do a proper walkthrough and, and share some of the specs and everything of this RV that we've picked up from Wilderness. It's called the Alpine 2. It's 23 feet, kind of some high level specs for you, but um, <laughs> we'll do a full walkthrough later this week and post on YouTube for you guys to check it out, just in case you're interested in renting this type of camper van. We've been so impressed with this rig being able to handle boondocking so easily, and especially because it did snow overnight, it didn't stick, but it did snow and we were totally warm inside without totally blasting through our propane or killing our batteries. We were cozy. Yeah, cozy. you actually told me to turn off at one point and we just had the temperature set on 18 degrees Celsius in the rig and set it to eco. Uh, and it was really toasty in here, which is great mm -hmm. um, because we decided to come here in the fall of New Zealand and did not already expect to get hit by a snowstorm while we're we over here. <laughs> well, it did say this was a very early winter storm yeah. for them, but if this is indicative of what the next month and a half are gonna be like, it's gonna be very yeah. interesting. So it's good to know that this rig can handle the snowy weather and it's not a problem. Yeah, and if you are a pro New Zealand camper banner and you have way more life advice and tips than we do from like three days of doing this, uh, drop, so your, not experts. Yeah, drop your comments and all your best campsites and things to do in New Zealand while we're over here so we can check them out. Thank you guys so much. Oh bye. Oh bye. I didn't know if we, I didn't know what to do with you. Just, sometimes just like wave. you just like wave and like you put I'm, your hand purposely in front of my face like you're trying to like bye Felicia. I'm used to doing the podcast where I'm like, all right, see y'all next week on the RV Entrepreneur Podcast. <laughs> it sounds oh, so. Wait. It's so late when you do it on video. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of lame when you do it on. Audio. All right, that's enough for today.